VO2 max test, are you just doing like a like an airdyne? Are you doing anything specific? How are you checking that? And what do you, what are your yeah. assessment tools that you like to use? So I use well, I do a maximal aerobic power test on an assault bike, which yeah. has been really beneficial for us because I base my protocols off of that. Um, we have an assault bike in the gym, so basically I'll get their maximal aerobic power, and it's basically measured in watts. So what I do is we'll do a two minute ramp up test, and we'll start at 160 watts for the males will start at 160, the females will start at 120, and they'll increase their wattage by about 50 to 60 watts every two minutes until they can no longer sustain that amount of output. And then from there, that'll end up being an indicator of their maximum aerobic power output. And that's going to give us a slight indication of their VO2 max too as well, as long as I'm also taking into account their heart rate. And again, I'm trying to measure their heart rate as much as possible. Not everyone can get a heart rate monitor, but that would be ideal, right? And um, then from there, I'll put together protocols based off of their MAP. And whether it be aerobic power, aerobic capacity, alactic capacity, these all go into place, just energy system training. And it really is just depending upon where they're at in their camp. you know. But as far as the VO2 max test, I usually just run a standard beep test. And again, like I said, they just run for 20 meters at a time. They listen to the beep. The only problem that I'm running into, and this is just from experience, is that um, a lot of the guys don't or can't run efficiently. So efficiency of movement becomes the issue again, right? Mm -hmm. um, if they can run and they run a lot, like like Dustin Poirier, you know, Edson Barbosa, these guys also do a lot of running just in general. So for them, it's a lot easier for them to get. But if you got heavyweights, I'm obviously not going to run them on a beat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so that MAP test comes in handy with the assault bike, you know, especially if I don't have a whole lot of time to run them into a lab and things like that. Um, but I can measure out, you know, LT1, LT2, just based off of the MAP. And then I can basically put together some type of calculations to measure out, okay, what's going to be the most important for them to work off of, whether it be, you know, in – in zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four, and maybe in the red zone, just depending upon where they're at and what they need, you know, from a conditioning standpoint. 